Hey, my name is David Wooten, and um, this is going to be a series of going through my book. I'm going to read through the book, but I'm also going to expound on some of the ideas, concepts, thoughts, what I was thinking at the time, maybe uh, the way that parts of the story have impacted others. But I want to put out a very special recognition. The reason I'm doing this to start with was the idea came up because my Aunt Charlotte, uh, her vision is getting worse and worse and, and uh, she's a lady of so much love and love her so much that I wanted to give her an opportunity to, to, to hear my book, to hear my story from me. And uh, I thought maybe some other people would enjoy it as well. So with that, and Charlotte, I love you. I hope you get to hear the fullness of this whole thing. So I'm going to simply start by reading the introduction. Mr. David, you're a godly man, Cameron said. And after a brief pause, he asked, can I ask you a question? Um, sure, I replied. How do you know God is real? I think I believe, but how can I know? How do you know? See, I'd known Cameron for several years. He'd been more of an acquaintance than a friend, but that was quickly changing now that he was working with us. I guess it was over, it was our newer and more familiar relationship that caused me to feel a little more pressure to get this right. To answer Cameron's question in the way that would cause him to want to do more than just believe, to want to know, God. So despite feeling unworthy of the godly man comment, I took a deep breath, said a quick prayer for the right words inside my head and said, well, I know how I know, but it's difficult to tell someone what to do to reach that point of knowing. It's different for everyone. The look on his face told me that wasn't going to be enough. So I took another deep breath, uttered another little prayer and said, I cannot explain it away. I cannot explain away multiple events in my life as coincidence. God doesn't do coincidence. He does opportunities. But hearing about my experiences won't get you from believing to knowing God. Your experiences will make that happen. More specifically, realizing these experiences and events are opportunities, not coincidences. I then went on to commend Cameron for asking because wanting to know God is the best place to start. I also conceded that in sharing our stories with one another, we could open one another's hearts and eyes and hearing to seeing God at work in your life, leaving the door wide open for the Holy Spirit to work in and through you. Little did I know when Cameron asked to hear my story that God had plans for me, that recounting my experiences would put me on a path to hear this book this video because we all need to see God in everyone we meet, starting with those we pass over regularly, those he puts in our path. John wrote, no one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. Love one another is the primary object objective of living a life of faith. It is not faith itself, but rather the manifestation of our faith. My experience came through practicing and serving and being open to the Holy Spirit. Higher power is what I first called him. But being open to the Holy Spirit in my life, I wish to show the simplicity of recognizing and developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Even if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, depending on where you are in your faith journey, you may express this love that is strong enough to connect us with the creator and living spirit of the universe in different ways. For now, understanding love is simply the act of doing for the betterment of another without expecting anything in return. If some of the Bible verses or anything you presume to be, presume to be religious talk causes you to resist, I implore you to continue. These verses are there to help you see the connection of my stories and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and all our lives. 
The goal of this book, however, is not just to tell you about me. I'm no one special that you should, or anyone else for that matter, needs to impersonate. The goal of this book is to inspire you, inspire you to make yourself fully and utterly accessible to God so that you can experience some of the perfection of heaven on earth as well. So that's the end of the introduction. And I'd like to go back and talk about coincidences just a little bit. You know, for me recently, it's come up quite often, maybe because I wrote it in a book, but that argument of, well, are there coincidences? Are all coincidences, you know, got doing something? And I've finally been able for myself to put that to rest. Because the reality is, is if we believe there is a God, that there is a creator, that he is in all things, that means he's in coincidences. So for me, God is strong enough, powerful enough, mighty enough, smart enough to create coincidences. Why wouldn't he be? The other thing I want to touch on is that being open and seeing God in those that we meet. That's what this whole book is about. It's about helping others get to the point where they're willing to see God first in those that they disagree with, that they resent, maybe even that they hate, because he's there. If we believe there's a God, then that God has his hands on everything. So I hope you'll stick with me. We're gonna go through these one at a time. I'll do a video for each chapter, make it a little easier to consume maybe. Um, thank you, God bless.